Hey there, everybody. It's Mike Delisio, and welcome back to my final installment of my top 50 solo games of all time here on the 2021 Dice Tower Spring Spectacular. Well, it's been a lot of fun going through these games. It's been fun talking about some of my favorite solo games, but we're now down to the last of the list, the top 10 of my favorite solo games. So let's just go ahead and get going with it. At number 10 is Mass Mora Dungeons of Arcadia. Now this is a game that I feel like doesn't get a whole lot of love. Hardly anybody talks about this game, but I've always loved it. It's based in the universe of Arcadia Quest, which you may be familiar with. And Masmora is a game that can be played competitively like regular Arcadia Quest, where it's a dungeon crawl and you're kind of punching each other and trying to get through the dungeon and get gold and treasure. But the way I prefer to play Masmora, both multiplayer and solo, is the cooperative mode, where you are facing off against the big bad, and you are going through the dungeon, and you have a particular character that you're playing as that has its own powers that you can add to to get more special abilities, exploring the dungeon, fighting monsters. Now, one of the things I really like about Mass Mora is that it has a system of monsters that are dice. And so when you flip over a tile that says that there's a particular level monster on there, you reach into a bag and you pull a die out. You roll the die and it that tells you which monster that you're fighting against. And that monster is going to have particular stats, particular abilities that you have to account for. I think that's really cool. I like the idea of not knowing exactly what monster I'm going to face. I think by putting them on dice, you have the ability to have so many different monsters you can fight against. You don't have to have a million minis on the board. I particularly enjoy that. So Mass Mora, I feel like, is a really good solo game. You've got basically a timer that's ticking down, and you've got to get through the dungeon, go down to the different depths of the dungeon until you find the final boss room and defeat that boss before the timer runs out. I really like the art and aesthetic of Arcadia Quest, and Mass Mora is basically, again, in that world. You can actually even, with a, a little crossover deck of cards, you can play Arcadia Quest characters in Mass Mora. I've always liked this game. I continue to enjoy it, and that's why it's in my top 10. That is Mass Mora, Dungeons of Arcadia. At number nine is Scythe. Now, this might be a bit of a surprise to people who have followed me in my solo gaming journey because Scythe for a long time was my number one solo game of all time. I obviously still hold it in tremendously high esteem as a solo game because it's in my top 10. However, it has gone down a bit really only in the sense that I feel like the AI system is a little bit hard to wrap your mind around. So when I recommend this game to people as a solo game, I always have to give a caveat that you're going to have to put some time in. You're going to have to learn kind of how things work because there's so much interaction. However, that being said, it's still a stunningly impressive solo design where you have an automa deck that's going to control the opponent that you're playing against. In Scythe, it is a game where you've got elements of resource management, and you've got elements of combat if you choose to do that. You don't always have to have combat in a game of side, but oftentimes you will. It's a game that I've spoken about a whole lot. I think it's a game that many people are familiar with. I still really, really enjoy it as a solo game. That's my number nine, Scythe. Number eight is The Isle of Cats. The Isle of Cats is a charming polyomino style game, meaning Tetris style pieces, where the idea is you are going to an island that is filled with magical cats and you are trying to rescue them onto your boat before the big bad guy comes to the island and wrecks havoc. And, and I don't know exactly what he's doing to the island, but you don't want the cats there. So you're taking your ship to the island to rescue the cats. So your player board is a big ship. And on that ship, you've got different rooms. And what you're trying to do is lure the cats off the island onto your boat essentially with fish, because, hey, cats love fish. That's a well-known fact, right? The cats are represented in these different Tetris-style shapes that you place onto your board, and you're trying to place them in such a way to gain scoring conditions. It's also a drafting game where you are drafting cards that are going to allow you to gain the fish that you need, gain the, the baskets that you need to get the, the cats onto your boat, gaining scoring conditions that are going to allow you to get more points. The solo game of Isle of Cats is so well done. And one of the main reasons why is that it does something differently than I've ever seen. Your player board is not only your player board, 
but it's also the player board of the AI. In this case, it's your jealous sister that's trying to do better than you. And so the way it works is essentially you have some starting information, but each round of the game, you learn more and more about what your sister is trying to accomplish. And so you're trying to manage what you're trying to do, but not trying to give points to your rival. Really, really well done. Such a great way of doing it because I think the standard design um, philosophy on this would have, made, would have been, okay, well, just have two boats. You manage your boat and you've got the AI's boat. That would have been a lot of work. Having it all on one boat is such a great, great design decision and an impressive design decision to be able to pull off. That is my number eight, Isle of Cats. Number seven is Outlive. Now, Outlive is a post-apocalyptic themed game where you basically have a fallout shelter. And I use that terminology purposely because this is really fallout shelter. Now there is now a fallout shelter, the board game, but this is really also fallout shelter, the board game. I do also want to state that for Outlive to be played solo, you won't find it in the base box. There are a couple of different ways you can do it. There is an expansion, an underwater expansion that has the solo game components in it, but you can also just for free print and play it off of Board Game Geek. And that's how I played my first 10 games of Outlive Solo was I just printed it online. It's a small deck of cards that you can print and a little player board for your AI opponent, which is known as the Horde. Outlive is one of my favorite worker placement games because it is so interactive. What you're basically doing is you are going out on this main board and you're trying to do a number of different things. You're either trying to collect resources, wood or, or water, or you are hunting animals to get food, um, or you are uh, trying to uh, get equipment, forage for equipment that you can put together to now, it's broken equipment that you put together. But what you're really trying to do is gain new survivors to come into your fallout shelter and you have to feed them. Each of the rooms in your player board, which is the shelter, is gonna have different abilities, but those abilities only are active if it's fully filled. And if it's fully filled, you have to feed them. If it's not, then it goes away. You also have radiation that you have to deal with. Each worker that you place out has a strength and they're numbered from, from five to one. And, and depending upon what number you do or you, you place, that's gonna be the strength of the action. So if you put a five worker out, it's gonna get more of that resource. You also can in, in, in what's the word here? You can, push influence, that's not the correct terminology, but basically a stronger worker can kind of take from a, a, a weaker worker. And you have to account for that with the solo game as well because they can do the same thing to you unless you have ammunition to fight back against them. Outlive is a game that has really, really over the years become one of my favorite games of all time. I really like the solo game. The AI is run by a deck of cards, as many of these are. It's very simple. You flip over the card and it's going to tell you exactly what the AI opponent is going to do. Such a satisfying experience is Outlive. Number six is Spirit Island, a fantastic cooperative game that takes kind of a theme that you've seen before and turns it on its head. So in Spirit Island, you've got a map that is made up of different tiles that has people that are trying to colonize it. So far, you know, I've seen this before type of a thing. However, in Spirit Island, what you are doing is you are playing as a spirit that is trying to work with the indigenous population of this land to scare away these, co these colonizers that would come and exploit the land from the people that lived there. It's a really, really challenging game. There's very thinky and it's card driven. And each spirit is very asymmetrical in nature. It plays very differently from the, from the others. When you play the game solo, you can play as just a single spirit or you can play as multiple spirits. Now, it's maybe more satisfying to play as multiple spirits because then you can kind of combo off of each other and, and utilize the strengths of each spirit to its best, but it does take more administrative work. It's more thinky that way. So depending on how you particularly want to play the game, whether you want to just focus on your one spirit or multiple spirits, you can do it either way. But either way, you're going to be playing cards that have fast powers or slow powers, which are going to determine when they trigger. And that's a really nice level of strategy. You're trying to cause fear to get rid of these colonists and the towns and cities they're building. 
Such an impressive design. They keep coming out with more and more expansions that have new spirits, new ways to play the game. A really, really wonderful game. A great solo game. That is Spirit Island. Number five is Everdell. Everdell is a game where you have a beautiful theme of forest creatures that you are trying to gain to build your city in front of you, okay? And in the solo game, you are playing against a solo opponent known as Rugwart. And what Rugwart's gonna be doing is competing with you, taking spots, it's a, it's a, a worker placement tableau building game, and they're gonna block spots from you, and they're also gonna take cards that you might want. Very simple to administer. But the way the game essentially works is that you have a couple of workers that you start with and you place them and you get resources. And these resources are gonna allow you to play cards into your tableau in front of you. You can play cards in hand or you can play cards out in a central area that is known as a meadow. The way the game is so special to me is that it is a, an incremental game. It feels almost exponential, if that makes any sense. In other words, when you first start playing, you think there's no way I'm gonna be able to get 15 cards in front of me, which is the max, because I've only got two workers, but it's played in seasons. And as the seasons progress, you get more workers. And sometimes the cards that you play in front of you will allow you to play other cards for free without spending resources, without placing workers. And so by the end of the game, you're taking these turns that allow you to do so much more. And I love games that do that. I love games that build incrementally and make you feel more and more powerful, make you feel more clever as the game goes on. Meanwhile, you've got Rugwart to worry about, who is also competing for the same events that you are, taking cards that you need, that you may vitally need. Like, oh, if I can only get that judge card, I can do that. Nope, they, Rugwart's taking that judge card from you. So it does a really nice job of, of dealing with those interaction points. A beautiful, beautiful game. Really well done. I really adore Everdell. Number four is Coffee Roaster. This is a solo only game that originally came out from a Japanese company known as Sashi and Sashi. That's the version that I have, but it has been more widely released in, in other parts of the world by uh, Stronghold and DLP, I believe. Coffee Roaster is a bag building solo only game. And what you're trying to do is roast the most delicious cup of coffee. And you do that by pulling these little tiles out of a bag. And these tiles are gonna allow you to do different things. They're gonna allow you to have particular strengths that you are trying to meet, a particular number. So a particular roast of coffee, you're trying to get it in a score range. And you do that by manipulating the beans that are in your bag. Also, these tiles may give you different abilities that allow you to, to mitigate some things and manipulate some things. But what it comes down to is you have a little coffee cup that you are placing tiles into and you are trying to reach that threshold, that numerical threshold. And depending on what you've got in that bag, you might have some burnt beans that are useless, that, that kind of mess up your, your brew. You might have numbers that are too low or too high for your purposes. And so you're trying to kind of manipulate so that you have the bag with the, the tokens that you need to, pr to brew that perfect cup of coffee. Very, very uh, simple in structure. There's not a whole lot that you need to worry about as far as rules but it is so satisfying. I absolutely adore this game. I love the theme. I love the art and components, mostly of the original Sashi version, although the new version is nice too. You can play it as just a one-off brew that takes maybe 10, 15 minutes, <clears throat> pardon me, or you can string them together as a series of three, which is how I tend to play it. Really, really like Coffee Roaster. <clears throat> pardon me. My number three is a game that has really, really shot up my solo games list. This is Too Many Bones. Too Many Go Bones is a game that I had played a, a number of years back and it was too much for me. Quite honestly, it was too much. I, I felt like I was overwhelmed with the keywords and, and the number of different abilities that your particular character had. But I took some time away from it and I came back and I reread the rules and it clicked. It just clicked. And now it has become, obviously, one of my favorite solo games of all time. It is a game that takes some investment. But when you do, if you take the time to learn how your character, which are known as gear locks, work, it is so satisfying. Essentially what you do is you choose a gear lock that's going to have a whole set of skills on your neoprene mat. That's kind of your player board. 
and your character is represented by poker chips and your health is represented by poker chips and the baddies that you fight are represented by poker chips on neoprene mats it's a chip theory game and you have a tyrant that you're facing off against and so what you're trying to do is go through a deck of cards that's going to present you with different scenarios they might be combats and if it's a combat then you move to the combat mat and you put your character out there and you put whatever the baddies are out there and you have to fight them it might be some other type of scenario that comes out but you're eventually trying to get through this deck until you can face off against the tyrant and hopefully beat the tyrant again lots of keywords lots of abilities dice driven but it feels so satisfying when you can learn the strengths and weaknesses of your particular character you get invested into these particular characters like man i really really love how this character works and i like being able to get my dice so that i can pull off these great skill combos really satisfying game and almost infinitely replayable i feel i really love too many bones my number two is raiders of the north sea now i always say that at my number two spot it's with the expansions with both expansions raiders base game is still a very good solo game but if i was going to play with just the base game i would probably choose raiders of scythia as a solo game but for my number two spot i'm counting raiders of the north sea and both expansions it's a worker placement game with a Viking theme, and it has a really clever and unique mechanic where you place a worker in a particular spot, take the action of that spot, and you pick a different worker from a different area and pull that worker back and do that action. It's a nice little twist on the classic worker placement mechanic. But what you're trying to do really is you're trying to build up your strengths and resources. You're trying to recruit crew to go out on raids, and these raids are gonna allow you to gain points. The solo game is driven by an AI deck of cards. Now, I want to be clear about this. In the box itself, you will not find an AI deck of cards. You can get a free app that will basically replicate that. There used to be a deck of cards you can buy, but those are no longer available, but they're also no longer necessary because the app is there and it works fantastically. Even if you don't like apps and games, all this really is is a virtual deck of cards. So, you probably shouldn't worry about that too much. The experience is worth it. Raiders of the North Sea is a fantastic solo game. I especially love it with those two expansions because it creates an epic experience that I love playing over and over again. All right, here we go. My number one solo game of all time. And I got to tell you, it's a new game. It is. It's a new game. It's Dwellings of Eldervale. This game has knocked my socks off. Now, I will say that it's, while it's a new game, it's a game that I've actually played for a while because I played a, a prototype version of it. And the first time I played it, I thought this game is something special. But now since that I've got the production copy, I've played it many, many times, both multiplayer and solo. And I feel, I've said this before on, on different videos, I feel like this game was almost designed for me. I absolutely adore it. It does so many things that I love. It's got an exploration mechanic to it where you are flipping over tiles to add to a map. It's got card play that is really satisfying. It's worker placement, which I love. It's got combat, which is there, but not an overwhelming part of the game where if you lose a combat, you feel like the game is over. I don't particularly love that. In this game, sometimes you even want to lose combat. I really like that. It's got different uh, asymmetric powers. I like that. The AI system is brilliant. It's called the Ghosts of Elder Vale that you're fighting against. And it's its own faction that's out there on the map competing with you to go up the different tracks of the elements, to fight to, to uh, battle on the main map, to build dwellings before you do. And it does this through a very clever card-driven system where you can see there are three cards that are face up. You know that these are three possible actions that the AI is going to take this turn. And you roll a die to determine which of those three cards is going to trigger. I really like that because it's a limited information. That to me is very similar to when you're playing against an opponent. You may not know exactly what your opponent's going to do, but you can look at what their board state is and go, you know, I bet they're likely to do this, one of these three things. I like that this kind of replicates that thing where you're not only worrying about what you're doing, but you're keeping an eye on what your opponent is doing as well. On top of that, you've got this lavish, gorgeous production, incredible production, fantastically designed game. 
I absolutely adore Dwellings of Elder Vale, both multiplayer and solo. Obviously, it's my number one solo game of all time. Whew. Well, let me tell you, that was a journey. I really enjoyed going through this top 50 solo games of all time with all of you. I hope you've enjoyed them. I hope that if you are a solo gamer that some of your favorites were on this list, or maybe you were turned on to new games that you hadn't heard about, or maybe you're inspired to check something out. If you have not played solo games before, but you'd maybe be interested in trying out, I hope at least one of the games out of these 50 is something that you'd be interested in trying. Thank you so much for watching the list. Thank you so much for your continued support of the Dice Tower and for watching the 2021 Spring Spectacular. And I thanks again. That's all I can say is thank you.